Right, so now we're trying a 120 film for my daughter and her mate, Gracie. Emma, come in with the reflector. You never said this was on YouTube. Come on. <laughs> You're such a get, Rog. <laughs> you never said this was YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be shooting some Eastman Kodak XX5222 film, or there's many rebrands out there that call it something else. I've got one here in my hand. This is Sinistil, it's the right way around, a double X, and also another 35 mil cassette uh, from the film photography project, they call it X2. <laughs> black and white motion picture film which is still in production today and you can find it widely available rebranded from many other companies around the world such as this Cine Still film photography project and also uh, Silbera as well which I believe are a Russian uh, film company. And being a motion picture film it was used in the movies for films such as The Raging Bull, Casino Royale, The Lighthouse which is a great film and also Schindler's List and Kill Bill. <laughs> And this stuff has been around since 1959, and if you're wondering what 5222 means, it's an indication of the emulsion and also the film base. It's the way that Kodak recognised their films. I read this online, it's all the information is out there for everyone to read. Mind you, it's not a cheap film. Most of these rolls are coming in at around about £10. I don't know what that is in dollars, but uh, I know this is around 10 quid, and so is this. But I did find uh, a website called Nick and Trick, which is in Folkestone in the UK. They're pre-rolling their own stuff, putting it out in cassettes. And Nick and Trick are selling pre-roll cassettes of this stuff for £6.30 for 24 exposures. So that's ideal if you want to have a little dabble and you don't want to spend too much. But Kodak still sell this in tins, 300 foot tins, and it ain't a bad price either. I found online it's $300 for a 400 foot tin, which then you can cut up into uh, four sections, four 100 foot, and put them in your bulk loader and roll yourself. Personally, I wouldn't bother. I don't shoot this stuff enough for me to go out and buy $300 worth of, of this film, but it's fun to grab hold of now and again, go and shoot, experience it and enjoy it. Now I have shot this stuff before, and if I remember, it's quite a contrasty film. This one says 200 ISO, this one says, I think my glasses on again. And this one says 3200 Kelvin, it's very small print. At, uh, this one says 3200 Kelvin, 200 ISO, and if you're gonna be shooting 5500 Kelvin, uh, 250. So if you're gonna be outside like I am today, 250, but this one says 200, interesting. But I'm gonna shoot it at 200 because that's what I've done before. Now Kodak recommend a Kodak D96 developer for this film, but I don't have any of that. In fact, I don't even think I've ever bought any of that. I think I bought Bellini's version once for a motion picture film back then. I haven't got any. So I'm just gonna uh, develop this stuff in x when I get back and uh, see how we get on with that. So I'm not gonna be doing any landscapes or any woodland photography with this film. I'm gonna go out on the streets and see what I can get. I'm gonna take the Leica MP, load that 35 mil cartridge inside this camera and go off and see what I can capture. It's a sunny day, so the contrast is probably gonna kick my ass. So it's up to me later on to decide if I'm gonna just pull the development back a little tiny bit to save the contrast or just whether I might even just go for it do the recommended times, see how we get on. Let's get on the streets. Right, so I'm out, uh, and I'm gonna walk around the back streets of Ride on the Isle of Wight. It's quite a populated area. Um, most of you guys know me, I'm not that interested in uh, people photography. It doesn't really float my boat that much, to be honest with you, um, unless it's something really interesting. But um, So I'm just gonna walk around these back streets and try and get some shots in shade, and also in sunlight as well. I'm walking in the bloody road, can't see behind me. I like that, look at that, that, uh, that chimney. Oh, I like that with the ivy and the, uh, the uh, telephone pile on there. Let's grab that. If I was to do any people stuff, I'd uh, more than likely set the camera into um, uh, zone focusing, you know, get my distance and then just shoot without even focusing, just shooting from the hip if you like. I like this little angle here, the brickwork and the white. This little street going very curving around the corner. Let's try and get that. So I've been around here before. I think I've shown this on the uh, channel maybe once or twice before. Um, but this is like the uh, back streets of Ryan. There's a massive theatre. There's loads of old fire escapes at the back and all that. And this is an old building as well. 
I just like taking photographs of old buildings, you know. Um, I don't know why I'm a bit weird like that, but <laughs> it's just photography. <laughs> but the amount of times that I still come here and take pictures, there's always something new to take photographs of, something that I didn't see before. So it's worth coming back to the same old spots and, uh, you know, studying it. I've got a couple of hours to kill, so there's no rush, you know. Like these old windows here. You know, the, uh, the panes are pretty rusty. And I've got this brickwork as well. Whether I can do something with it, I'm going to try a picture, but I don't know. See how we can frame it, see what we can do. And when I'm taking my pictures, I've always got a vision in my mind what it will look like on a print. <laughs> I've also seen something funky up there. I've got this funny little lantern, and right above that is a, right in line with it, is a window. I don't even know what's going through my mind here, but I've got this window and this coke, a bottle of uh, Coca-Cola there. I'm going to take the photograph, even though I'm going to get myself in a reflection. Let's try it out. These are the old uh, fire escape stairs. I find these so interesting. I'd love to uh, go to New York one day and take photographs of all the fire escapes there down, the, down all the back streets of New York, you know? Unfortunately, the sun has been a right dick today. It's really bright, but this might look nice. Try and make this look old. Just a bit of that wall, the front of that van. And the sun is really on it. Now, I like all these shadows down this. Uh, Little way. Try and get the cars out. Or another way of taking photographs of people in the street is to just plot up, get your composition and wait for someone interesting to walk past or stop um, and try and do it unobtrusively, you know. That hotel is called the Royal York Hotel, and I know that because the old sign's still sitting there uh, where it's all come off and it's just left its imprint in the uh, front of the hotel. Quite an interesting place to take photographs of. Not sure how long that will be there, standing there for, but um, <laughs> depends on when the owner wants to do it up or not. Probably just trying to piss the council off. <laughs> so, shit, I've shot uh, the whole roll. I thought it was 36 in there, it's not, there must be only 24 in there, so. <laughs> I had one nice composition here and uh, I went out of film. Never mind, let's go back and develop this in the X hole and see how it looks. we
secret camera. They don't know they're going on YouTube, but I'll have to get the release form signed later on from them. So now we'll try the 120 film for my daughter and her mate, Gracie. Emma, come in with the reflector. You never said this was on YouTube. Come on. <laughs> such a dick, Roger. <laughs> you never said this was YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, I thought they came out really well. The 35mm negs, when I developed those, I developed those in Xtol's uh, developer and at stock as well for seven minutes as per the massive dev chart. I was contemplating on just pulling that down to about six because it was such a contrasty day, but I thought, you know what, just go with the flow and see what happens. And they did come out a bit punchy as expected. But that was mainly because I had a contrasty day. If I look through the leader of my film, I look through, I could just about see the sunlight. So it's not completely a jet black leader, which indicates to me that the development was okay. So it's just a contrasty day, but it still held up really well. Managed to get some scans. I didn't do any printing on the 35 mil. When I got home, my daughter turned up with a mate and they did a spin out for lunch. And I thought, what a great opportunity to get a couple of photographs with him. If I told them it was going on YouTube, they just would not have done it. So I just said, will you help me out for a minute? I just need to take some photographs. So I used the, the, the uh, Yashica Mac G 124G and also a roll of the 120 Cine Steel. The backing paper of that 120 Cine Steel is not cheap at all. It it's pretty much reminds me of Ilford's backing paper. There it is there, very Ilford feeling, and it's not cheap. So it's in quality backing, whatever Cine Steel are doing with it. Um, in fact, how do they even get hold of a 120? I've, that, I don't know, the mind boggles, doesn't it? Even like Oro, they, they can produce now and again 120 rolls of their Oro UM54, which is another motion picture film. Um, I think to myself, how do they do the 120s? Must be a certain special cut that they do. <laughs> and those negatives came out really nice. I developed those in Xtol one part to one part. I was gonna go at stock and I just thought to myself, they had white shirts on and window light. I just thought if I go stock, I'm probably gonna blow out a shirt. So I went to one part to one part and then um, the negatives came out really well, I was pleased. And in the dark room, you just saw that I made this nice print of my daughter and her mate. They've been mates since I was at school, um, in primary school. No messing about really in the dark room, just a low, I had to use a low contrast filter because they had these white shirts on, I used a low contrast filter. And then I just did a little tiny bit of dodging for a few seconds around their faces just to lighten it up a little tiny bit. And that came out really nice. I'm really happy with that print. So like I said at the start, it's not really a film that I go and shoot often. Uh, now and again I'll get a couple of rolls as in this situation here and it is a nice pleasing film to shoot so I definitely recommend anyone that hasn't shot this film before go and grab yourself a roll it ain't cheap but there again a coffee and cost ain't cheap either go and grab yourself a couple of rolls have some fun and see what you get you might even be surprised you might even like it my first experience with it with my daughter's boyfriend has a little bit contrasty that's why I said at the start I found it a contrasty film but this time round do you know what? I really liked it and uh, I'm looking for, I've got a couple more rolls, so I'm looking forward to seeing what I can come up with with that in the future. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching and all that stuff. I'll catch you next time. Roll the intro.